Feyenoord. The pride of the South. The side from Rotterdam. 15-time Eredivisie champions, 12-time KNVB champions, and 2-time UEFA Cup winners. Last season, the 2016-17 season, Feyenoord managed to break an 18-year drought after winning the Eredivisie title for the first time since 1998-99. However, it has not been smooth sailing ever since. Many fans hoped the club would rise to the next level and become Dutch football's biggest side. But right now, that mission is failing. They currently sit in fourth place on the Eredivisie table, 22 points behind first place PSV. Well, today, we are gonna change that. We are not only going to take over Feyenoord and hopefully deliver them domestic success, we will deliver continental success as we rebuild Feyenoord. G'day guys, how's it going? It is Jared HD here. Welcome back to another rebuild. For the first time in the rebuild series for FIFA 18, we are traveling to the Eredivisie. We are traveling to the Netherlands. We are rebuilding Feyenoord. But if you guys do go on to enjoy today's rebuild, make sure you leave a like on the video and also make sure if you are new around here that you bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button down below. For those of you who have not seen a rebuilding challenge video yet, here are the rules. So the main objective of this is to take a team to the Champions League final. We will be simulating every single game up until the Champions League final, which we will play ourselves. We can make whatever transfers we like, realistic, unrealistic, it does not matter. There's a big focus on the transfer window, only showing players that we sign. And finally, don't get butt hurt if I sell your favorite player. Let's get into the rebuild. So this is the starting 11 we're going to be rocking with for the first season. An aging squad in some elements like with Robin Van Persie and the Australian legendary goalkeeper Brad Jones. But a few other elements of the squad are pretty young. But let's see what we can do with the team starting off. Let's get into the transfer window. So we've made our first signing in charge of Feyenoord. We have brought in Wesley, the Brazilian striker from Club Bruges in Belgium. The 20 year old signs for us here for six million pounds. My main goal around getting him is as a replacement for Robin Van Persie, probably next season or halfway through this season when they kind of overlap in overall. A big signing here, Brad Jones, whilst I love him, not getting any younger, we need to future proof and we've done that. Ruben Blanco is gonna sign from Celta Vigo for 11.8 million pounds. And a player departure here. We have sold Karim El Amadi to Borussia Dortmund for 10.2 million pounds. Pretty good sum for a 32 year old midfielder. And we have immediately replaced El Amadi and we have brought in Rodri or Rodrigo from Villarreal for 13.1 million pounds. An absolute steal if you ask me. We've really had a good opening window so far. We have had a very successful opening window in charge of final. We've brought in Wesley, Blanco and Rodrigo. We have gotten rid of El Amadi and our team is looking decent. It's going to be interesting to see how we grow. But anyways, we're in the Champions League this first season. Let's go have a gander at our group. We've been placed into a very difficult group for our opening adventure in the Champions League. Would not surprise me if we finished dead last in the group. But you know what? I don't really expect us to win it this season, so... Not too fussed, but PSG, Sevilla, and Roma in our group. Let's have a look at how we go. Yep, I was right. We finished dead last in our group, but I'll tell you what, we weren't far away from qualifying, only three points away from Sevilla, which makes me kind of think, if we were in an easier group and had a better team, we would have probably gotten out of the group. Next season should be interesting should we qualify. And the road to qualification is definitely on track at the moment. We are sitting one point behind AZ. I think it's Akmal or something like that. I'm really sorry to any Dutch football fans out there. I've got a very limited knowledge of the Dutch league, but we're sitting in second position. The big dogs like Ajax, PSV, they are sitting just below us, which is great to see. So. Hopefully we can get back-to-back -back Eredivisie titles. Due to the fact that we spent all of our finances in the opening window, basically, we've done no business in this transfer window. This is the squad we have. 
Uh, Botigan is out for a couple of weeks, so hopefully he'll be right by the end of the season. But let's see if we can win the Eredivisie title. Well, that really didn't go to plan. We finished the season where Feyenoord currently sit in real life, fourth position. Although contrasting real life, this title race was a lot closer than the current one. We were seven points behind Ajax, who ended up winning the league. I think this means we play Champions League football again next season, although it might be Europa League. I don't know what sort of, what the rankings are for the Dutch League. Unfortunately, we were eliminated in the Orange Becca, which I'm guessing is like one of the cups, by the eventual winners, Heracles Almelo. I can just tell I'm triggering so many Dutch fans with some of my pronunciations. Bayern Munich did go on to beat Man United 1-0 to win the Champions League final. And AC Milan took down Sporting to win the Europa League. So that is the end of season number one. Let's see what pieces we can add to the Feyenoord puzzle in season two and continue on with this rebuild. Abdu Diallo is going to be our first signing for season number two. Never signed this guy before in a rebuild, but the Frenchman is joining us from Mines for £15 million. And since we've brought in a brand new centre back, we have sold Jean Ari van der Heyden to Angers. Angers in the French league, I believe they're from, for £5.8 million. Continuing to push the boundaries here and improve our squad. I'm actually so happy with the business we've done. In this entire rebuild, we're going to sign Hassam R, I believe his name is, for £13.5 million from Leon. That is a big signing there. Going to continue to improve our starting 11. Another quality transfer window. We've been doing the goods this season, or this whole rebuild, I should say. Diallo and R in. Van, Van der Heiden out. So this is what our starting 11 looks like. Slowly but surely improving. Hopefully we can get a good majority of the starting 11 into the 80s by the end of the season. But let's see what we're at halfway through the season. We're not in the Champions League, by the way. We're in the Europa League. So here we are just about halfway through the Eredivisie season on the 1st of January. And good sight to see. We are top of the table. Only one loss all season. So I think the big thing for us in the second half of the season is to turn some of these draws into wins and just absolutely dominate it. Yeah, let's not talk about this transfer window. That was pretty disappointing. Didn't have the funds. I was thinking maybe I'll bring in someone on a pre-contract. Couldn't do that. Couldn't sell anybody. Yeah, we copped a big L on this window, but... Let's see how it affects the rest of season two. No, we finish in second position. Oh, Ajax win it again. We're two points behind them. So close, but so far. At least we're going to be in the Champions League for season three, but that is so disappointing. It was really a three-horse race between us, Ajax, and Groningen. PSV and Herenveen and all those teams below them a decent away away, but we finish in second place. But a consolation is that we did manage to go on and beat PSV to win the Orange Becker 2-0, so that's a great result. Manchester United did beat Real Madrid 2-1 in the Champions League final, and Atletico Madrid beat Real Sociedad in an all-Spanish Europa League final. I can tell you guys that we got eliminated in the round of 32 of the Europa League because we lost to Hertha Berlin. So we're slowly but surely getting there. Season 2 comes to a close. Let's see what we can do in Season 3. I genuinely don't know when I'm expecting to complete this rebuild. Alright, so we're going to kick off the third season in charge of Feyenoord with a goalkeeper departure. Kenneth Vermeer is off to Villarreal for £3.4 million. Pounds. We're going to bring ourselves in a brand new top quality centre back here, Victor Lindelof. A great signing, the Swede coming to the Netherlands now. He joins us here at Feyenoord for £10 million pounds plus the left back Haps. A great signing if you ask me. 
Welcome to Feyenoord, Victor Lindelof. Another player departure here as Marco Vionovic is off to Deportivo for £4.95 million. Pounds. So we have made it to the playoffs of the Champions League. And of course, I'm going to show you guys it. We're taking on fierce opposition in Copenhagen. Of course, we have rebuilt them in the past. So definitely check out that video if you have not seen that rebuild yet. Probably the hardest rebuild I've had in a long time. But... Let's see if we can get ourselves through to the Champions League group stages here in season number three. They take the lead in the 32nd minute. I'm going to simulate it a 2-1 scoreline, but Lindelof gets us an away goal. This here was a transfer I was very happy to see happen. Steven Bagaz, I don't know how to pronounce this guy's last name, but he was our right winger. I wanted to upgrade that position this year, so the fact we've been able to sell him to Wolves for 13.8 million pounds really helps out our cause. All right, time for leg number two here. We are at home against Copenhagen. And if we get knocked out in the qualifiers, I will be quite disappointed. Let's get it, fellas. Got a few transfers in the works, but let's see if we can get ourselves through to the group stages. I'm going to simulate it. 2 nil. That gets us through, doesn't it? Because 2-1 in the first leg. So, 4 4-2? Yeah, no, 3-2. Sorry, my maths is terrible, but 3-2, we're into the group stages. Well, we have just spent the big bucks and brought in a deadline day signing here. One of my favorite players in FIFA 18, Karimo, Justin Clivert, joining us from Ajax. So a very controversial signing within Dutch football, but the Dutch left winger, who I'm going to be playing on the right wing, joins us from Ajax for 25.7 million pounds. Another deadline day departure here. Jens Tornstra off to Newcastle United for 5.8 million pounds. That was a crazy window. Lindelof and Kluivert in Haps, Vermeer, Vini, Vianovic, <laughs> Bergois and Tunstra. So many bad pronunciations, but that is such a busy window. Let's go check out our Champions League group. A very interesting group here for our second attempt at the Champions League. Spurs, Roma and Rangers. I'd be lying to you guys if I said I had any idea on how we're going to go. I don't think we're going to beat Spurs, but... We came close to beating Roma last time. Heck, Rangers might even cause us a bit of a problem. So, I'm not even going to speculate any longer. I'll see you guys at the end of the group stages. All right, so here we are on the 1st of January. And things are definitely going to plan so far. We just need to be making sure we win the league from this point on. And we're currently on track to do that. Not a single loss this entire season, which I am stoked about. Eight points clear at the top of the table ahead of FC Utrecht, and we're 10, no, 11 points clear of Ajax, PSV, and I said, I'm not even, I'm just gonna call them AZ. But anyways, let's see what we can do now in the January transfer window. I forgot to check the Champions League groups as well, and we qualified, lads. What the heck? We have finished second. Tottenham, a perfect group stage for them. Six wins, zero draws, zero losses, but we slot in in second spot. Three wins, one draw, two losses. So we're in the round of 16 for the first time in this rebuild. And we're going to have some stiff competition here in the last 16 as we've been drawn up against Juventus, which should be interesting to say the least. But now let's get into the champion, uh, into the friggin' January transfer window. <laughs> so I'm trying to limit the amount of pre-contract signings I make in rebuilds, but... That being said, we've just brought in James Rodriguez on a free contract next season. The Colombian joins us here, £330,000 a week. But I'm so excited to see him in fine old colours in season number four. All right, a player departure here as Bart Newcoop is off to Brighton Hove Albion for 8.3 million pounds. So we've made a deadline day transfer here. Didn't have all that much money to spend, but we have made a decent signing, I feel like. Manuel Akanji, the Swiss center back, 78 rated, but has awesome growth ahead of him, has joined us here from Borussia Dortmund for 14 million pounds. A signing for the future. 
Welcome to Feyenoord, Manuel Akanji. So a pretty decent January transfer window then. Hammers Rodriguez in next season, which is a pretty weird thought. Uh, we've also got Akanji in and we've lost New, New Coop. Don't have to pronounce his name ever again, but let's now get into the Champions League round of 16 against Juventus. All right, so we have such a difficult task as it is taking on Juventus here in the round of 16, but to add insult to injury, both Wesley and Auer, our striker and attacking midfielder, are out through injury for probably both legs. So yeah, things aren't looking too good at all, but let's see if we can pull off an absolute miracle here. That would have helped so much. Botus misses a penalty in the 16th minute. They've got friggin' Raheem Sterling in there. Their team is looking good. They've got Aguero on the bench. And somehow it is still nil all. Larson gives us the lead off the bench. What is happening? Higuain gets them an away goal. But the fact that it is one all is quite surprising. They have an away goal, but I still have a little bit of hope. So Wesley is back, but still no hour for the second leg here away in Turin. We travel to Italy, Turin, as we take on Juventus. Come on, fellas. Can we cause an upset? Sterling scores in the first minute, which does not help. So it's 2-1 in Juventus' favor with an away goal. But if we get a goal here, then it goes to extra time. Fingers crossed, fellas. Let's hope. When he halfway, come on, lads. Somebody get us an away goal. Somebody step up and send this one to extra time. There, we're going to get it. Holy crap, I didn't even see that. Larson makes it one all. He scored in both legs, didn't he? We're into extra time. I didn't even see that. It took a while for my brain to compute that, but we might be going to penalties here against Juventus. Are we? Oh, no, we lose on penalties. Oh, fair play, but I'm actually really happy that we even pushed it that far. Get in there, fellas. Whilst it wasn't the best second half of the season, losing four games, we still managed to win the league here, finishing eight points clear, and we are playing in the Champions League again next season. I think from this point on, we need to make it a guarantee that we win the league every season until we're able to win the Champions League and win the challenge. So I don't see any reason why not if our squad is going to be getting better. I guess it really just depends on what the rest of the teams in the league will be doing. But I'm excited to see what we can do. We also win the Orange Becker again. We win the Domestic Cup on penalties against Ajax. So great to see more silverware added to the cabinet. PSG did go on to win the Champions League final 2-0 over Manchester City. Pretty excited to see and pretty optimistic to see what we can do next season with the arrival of James Rodriguez and I'm sure the arrival of some other quality world-class players. I mean, I don't know how many seasons I'm expecting this rebuild to take. And AC Milan took down AS Monaco in the Europa League final. So here's a quick little look at our squad report at the end of the third season. The team is developing quite nicely. I'm very happy I went with this three at the back formation because we have an absolute array of centre-back talent. Our midfield is strong, our wingers are getting stronger, probably going to look to bring in a striker next season. Wesley, going to keep him there, but uh, Horgensen or Jeg Jorgensen, I have no idea. I think I'm going to look to upgrade him. Clive doing pretty well as well. But that is going to bring our third season in charge of Feyenoord to a close. Definitely improvement here. And a rebuild I'm enjoying making so far, but let's get into season four. Our fourth season in charge of Feyenoord begins with a player departure. The Swedish attacking midfielder Simon Gustafsson is off to West Bromwich Albion for 8.1 million pounds. So we have sold our young left back Tyrell Malassia to Stad Rene for 8.7 million. If this was a normal career mode, I would keep onto him for a little bit longer, let him grow and probably play him, but I don't really want to play him. We're not playing left backs. And I went, I needed the money now if we wanted to get a decent striker. So we sold him for 8.7 million. So much negotiating behind the scenes to get this deal through, but we have brought in a top quality striker. Patrick Schick is joining us here at Feyenoord for 41.45 million plus Horgensen or Jorgensen, don't have to pronounce his name again, 
What a big signing. Welcome to Feyenoord, Patrick Schick. Sufjan Amrabat is the latest player to depart the club here at Feyenoord, really cleaning the stocks out lately, but the Monaco, or the Moroccan, what the hell, the Monaco centre midfielder, the Moroccan centre midfielder is off to AC Milan for £18.7 million. I don't even bother editing out these little make mix-ups I make because I kind of find them funny. But anyways, good luck at AC Milan, mate. So a very, very interesting transfer window here. We're going to get rid of... We're going to bring in Schick, I should say, and of course, James Rodriguez from last season. Get rid of Jorgensen, Gustafsson, Malassia, and Amrabat. And I'll tell you guys something. I'm working on another deal in the background that's not going to be able to go through this transfer window, but we should have the player come in in January if it goes through, but I'll keep you updated. Let's go have a look at our Champions League group. Group A is where we sit for the Champions League this season, and it's actually a really difficult group. Chelsea, Inter Milan, and Ghent. I think we'll be able to take care of Ghent, but it's gonna be interesting to see the order of the group, so. If we don't make the signing I'm thinking of, I'll see you guys at the end of the group stages, but yeah, I'll keep you in the loop. So I've got my signing. It's not gonna be able to happen until the January window, but on January 1st, we're gonna be signing T Tammy Abraham as our new one of our new starting strikers. Great signing here. How, did, how much did we pick him up for? I'll have a look in a second. I think it was like 24 million, but we'll accept that. And I look forward to having you in the club, Tammy. That's how much it is, 23.9 million. All right, we've qualified again, just. But we're through to the knockout rounds of the Champions League. I can't be upset about that. Chelsea do what I think it was Spurs did last season, going 6-0-0. We have gone three wins, three losses, nine points, two points ahead of Inter Milan, and Ghent finished bottom of the group. So. In the last 16, where are we? Top right, no, Man United. That is gonna be tough. If we can get past the round of 16, then we will be doing very well. I'll be interested to see with our new look squad. It's a good squad, but is it good enough to take down Man United? I don't know. At least things are still going well in the Eredivisie. We're sitting top of the table again, six points clear of Ajax. And we are nine points clear of PSV and AZ, so not doing too bad at all. And of course, since it's the 1st of January, that means Tammy Abraham now joins us here at Feyenoord. So obviously we used up the majority of our budget in the transfer windows previous, signing Schick and Abraham. So not a single signing in this transfer window. This is what our squad does look like though, so... I'm actually somewhat excited to see how we go against Man United. I think our squad is only a few more pieces away from being able to contend to complete the rebuild. So let's get into the round of 16 now against Man United. All right, let's give it a go. At home here against Man United for the first leg. Bote, our normal left winger, or what do I? I've got no idea how to pronounce his last name, is out. So we've put in Larson, but besides that, it's a full-strength squad. Man United have brought in Tete, Martinez, Digne. Martinez scores an away goal. They've got Fakir. They've got Sola. They've got such a good side. They're 1-0 up. They've got Bellotti on the bench. Man United, settle down. Can we get a home goal here? Martial makes it 2-0 in United's favour. Things are not looking like they're going to go to plan here. 2-0 down after the first leg. And we have an almost impossible task now in the away leg at Old Trafford. All right, so it's time for the away leg. And yeah, we have a very, 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 very difficult task ahead of us. I have like 1% hope that we're going to actually get through this. We need an early goal. If Man United score an early goal, then we're just about screwed. And they do. Martial makes it 3-0. I'm just going to simulate it. Oh, wow. Our squad was good, but we still lose 5-0 in the round of 16 of the Champions League. This is not going to plan so far. We are just going from strength to strength domestically. Yes, we're not doing amazingly on the European front, but in the Eredivisie, we have done better than we did last season. We win the league by 13 points. Only a single loss 
for the entirety of the season. 13 points ahead of Ajax, and then 21 points ahead of PSV. We have absolutely dominated this season, but most importantly, we get another crack again in Season 5. And we win our third successive Orange Beckard Cup, 3-0 over PSV, so things are even getting easier in that competition. Man United did go on to win the Champions League 2-0 over Tottenham, so that definitely makes me a lot happier considering we got smashed against the eventual champions and so did Barcelona. And Arsenal did go on to defeat Sevilla 3-1 to win the Europa League final. So that is season four, done and dusted. A few big improvements, hopefully in season five, we'll see us challenge for the Champions League title. But let's get in to season number five. All right, so we begin off season five with a player departure here, trying to get some funds together. So we have sold Sam Larsson, the Swedish left winger, to Bayer Leverkusen for 17.9 million pounds. A big time signing here in season number five, taking a massive step towards completing the rebuild. We have brought in Andreas Pereira, from Manchester United, the Brazilian left midfielder, 85 rated, joins us here at Feyenoord for 50 million pounds. That is a big time signing. So definitely nowhere near as much player movement as previous windows, but still a pretty decent window, slowly but surely setting ourselves up for success. Pereira in, Larson out. This is what the starting 11 looks like. Our team is looking real good. Let's go have a look at the Champions League group stages for season number five. Another, another very interesting group here for the Champions League in season five. Man United, who absolutely just annihilated us last season, is going to be our opponent in the group stages, along with Porto and Anderlecht. I'm confident we get through the group stages, but I'm very interested to see how we match up against United. So let's simulate it, and I'll see you guys after the group stages. Well, that hasn't gone to plan. We miss out on the knockout rounds of the Champions League by two points. Only one loss the entire group stages, but the three draws have cost us in the end. I mean, if we turned one of those draws into a win, we would have topped the damn group. Instead, I'm pretty sure we're gonna be relegated now to the Europa League, so. Let's see if we can go deep in that, but this really sucks. I mean, I thought this would have been a season where we could have gone deep in the tournament. Not win it, but maybe go semi-finals, quarter-finals. Regardless, let's now focus on topping the Eredivisie and getting back to the Champions League in season number six. We're doing well in the Eredivisie. Only one loss all season, but unfortunately, Ajax are definitely keeping pace with us, so... We need to make sure we take it up a notch in this second half of the season. We're going to make our second pre-contract signing for this fine order rebuild. Next season, we bolster our backline. Nicholas Yule is coming in from Bayern Munich on a free transfer. 90 rated, absolute insanity. Very much looking forward to seeing him next season. A quiet window here, had enough money to bring in Nicholas Yule for next season, and that was about it. Very excited to see how he goes, where he slots in, and how we go as a club. So, let's check in at the end of the season. Thankfully, like I said at the start of January, we needed to turn things up a notch, and we have. We didn't lose a single game in the second half of the season, and ultimately, that led to us going on and finishing top of the Dutch League, the Eredivisie table, again. How many seasons in a row is that now? Is that three years in a row? Four years in a row? This is domination now. Ajax, PSV, you just can't catch us. But unfortunately, our run in the Orange Becker comes to a close here after four seasons. We lost in the round of 16 to Groningen. Chelsea did go on to beat Atletico Madrid 2-0 to win the Champions League final. And Monaco won the Europa League on penalties against Bayern Munich. I know for a fact we got eliminated in the round of 32 against Roma. So that brings to close, that brings to an end what I would describe as a very disappointing fifth season. 
I thought we'd be able to go deep in the Champions League this year. Knocked out in the group stages. We have to do better in season number six. Season number six begins with a bang as we sign Sergio Rico from Sevilla. The 28-year-old goalkeeper joins us here at Feyenoord for 41.3 million pounds. I'm not gonna lie, our team actually looks hectic this season. Our front line is awesome. The growth has been off chops. Now I'm just hoping that Lindelof and Diallo grow a little bit more. If they do, I'm pretty confident we can go deep in the Champions League this season. Don't know about winning it, but definitely think we'll do better. I, I definitely think we'll qualify for the knockout rounds compared to last year. Again, quality over quantity. Rico in, our team looks goddamn good. Let's go and check out our Champions League group. Again, a pretty difficult group in the Champions League. I really hope with the squad we've built up, that we can get out of the group stages, but I mean, Liverpool, Leon, and Basel aren't exactly super easy opponents, so it'll be interesting, time will tell. Let's suss it out. Yes, lads, we qualified just. We edge out Leon by one point to make it through to the knockout rounds. That would have been so embarrassing and so disheartening if we didn't make it past the group stages for a second successive year. But as we switch over to the tournament tree, where are we? So Liverpool are taking on Club Bruges. We are taking on AC Milan, which should be quite an interesting battle, but I've got my fingers crossed we can get through it. And here we are, halfway through the Eredivisie season. We are sitting top of the table, two losses all season. But Ajax are 12 points behind us, so are Utrecht, and then PSV and Zwolle are uh, 13 points behind us, so we're in a decent position. Just got to carry on. Again, when I make these big name signings at the start of the season, financially, I can't afford to make any others. Although that being said, our squad's pretty damn good. I really like our chances this season. It'll be very interesting. Let's just... Let's just go and see how we go against AC Milan. I really want to go deep in the Champions League this year. All right, this is going to be interesting. AC Milan at home. James Rodriguez not in the picture. He is out until, for another six weeks, broke his collarbone. So, sorry, his tailbone. So, we've got to hope that the other lads can step up in his absence. They've got a very good side here, AC Milan. A lot of young beasts. They've signed Van Dyke. They've signed Brooks. They've signed Heinrichs. They've signed Alcacer. They've got a very good young side. We need to get some goals. We do through Pereira, which is great to see. One nil up. No. Just as I was about to say, no away goals. They go and get an away goal. Make it one all. And they've given us a big challenge heading into the second leg. No Diallo. No James Rodriguez. The odds are stacked against us. Diallo out through suspension, Hamez still injured, but he should be back if we happen to get through to the quarterfinals. It's going to take a massive push, though. We need to score a goal. Doesn't help that they get the lead, but if we score a goal, then their away goal is out of the equation. Sheik does just that, so it's all tied up. Owl makes it 2-1, so Milan need two goals now. Alcacer, they get a goal back, but if we can hold on for the last 20 minutes, we will go through... On away goals rule, final few minutes, yes, get in there. We go through on away goals rule. I didn't have much hope, but we are through to the quarters. Yes, lads, finally, we've broken the curse and got past the round of 16. All right, so quarterfinals, Champions League, AS Monaco. They took down Man City in the round of 16, and we know for a fact that they have so many amazing young players in their squad. They're bound to be nearing their potential now, so it should be very, very interesting. Let's get into the quarterfinals. The good news, however, we are back to a full strength starting 11. We have the away leg first up, which I'm always a big fan of. I pray to the FIFA gods that we can get some away goals on the board. I mean, look at their squad. They've got Mbappe, they've got Lamar, they've got Fabinho. 
Uh, Hernandez. Our gets us an away goal, though. This guy's an absolute machine. Lamar misses a pen, but they do get a goal. Might have been tapping. The Corre is going to get them a tapping goal or a, an equalizing goal. Still a good position for us. If we can get a second goal, that would be really, really clutch. Are we going to? Only a few minutes to go, and it's a one-all draw. Pereira is out for this second leg, but we need to make sure. We need a defensive performance of a lifetime. We need to keep a clean sheet. If we do that, we go through to the semi-finals. We can't allow Monaco to do what we did to Milan last time out, and that's to score two goals in the away leg and snatch it. We need to be strong. Diallo definitely helps our cause by getting us a goal, but Monaco, if they score, they will still be able to take this to extra time. A second goal for us would be massive. There's 20 minutes to go. Come on, fellas. Let's hold on. There's just five minutes to go now. We hold on, and as easy as that, we get through to the Champions League semi-finals. All right, let's go, Feyenoord. Okay, I knew it was going to be goddamn tough in the semi-finals, but Bayern Munich were probably the last team I wanted to see. You guys know if you've seen a few, fair few rebuilds, how much of a hate I have for Bayern Munich in terms of how good they are. As a club, I don't really mind them. But on FIFA, not a fan. They are so damn good, so... If we make it through to the Champions League final, I don't think anybody will debate that we deserve to be there. Fingers crossed we get there, but Bayern Munich are a massive obstacle to overcome. So we've got a full strength starting 11 here for the away leg against Bayern. This is going to be a really tough task. Traveling to the Allianz for the first leg, if we can get some goals, that would really help us. I've decided to start Akanji over Lindelof due to overall reasons, but look at that Bayern side. They've signed Azpilicueta and Alderweireld, but that is virtually the side they have right now. Hamas Rodriguez netting a penalty against his former side is always nice. They have Messi on the bench. Holy shit, I just realized that. And we got a second goal through Pereira. What is happening? They get a goal back. They've got Messi on the bench. Life is weird, but we've beaten them 2-1 and got two away goals in the process. All right, leg number two. We're definitely in the driver's seat here. Full strength squad. We just need to make sure we don't lose this game. If we lose it 1 0, we're sweet. If we lose it 2 0, we're screwed. We score in the seventh minute, which definitely helps. So that makes it 3 1 in our favor. Bayern need three goals now in an hour. They can certainly do it, but I'm feeling real good at the moment. Into the second half. If it stays like this, I'm happy. I hope Auer isn't injured for or suspended for the final, but Schick has just booked us a spot. 2-0, Messi's on for them. Schick makes it 3-0, Lewandowski makes it 3-1, but we have just absolutely crushed the Bavarians. We have beaten Bayern 3-1, which translates to 5-2 on aggregate. The Champions League final. Real Madrid versus Feyenoord. Now, Real Madrid have just absolutely murdered Juventus in the semi-final. My God. They've beaten Man United and PSG along with Juventus in the road to the final, which is just tough competition. We know how good Real Madrid are. This is gonna be a challenge. Before we get into the final though, let's have a look at the other competitions. West Ham defeated our Dutch rivals Ajax in the Europa League final. We win yet another. Eredivisie title, so that means we are going to be playing in the Champions League in season number seven, even if we lose tonight to Real Madrid. We also get back to winning ways in the Orange Becca, taking down Ajax 2-0 in the final there, so we've absolutely dominated so far in the domestic sense throughout this entire rebuild. All right, so before we get into the Champions League final, let's have, hopefully, fingers crossed, the final look at this squad report. And this has been a very interesting rebuild so far. Even if it doesn't finish, I'm very happy with how we've built the squad so far. Unfortunately, our 88 rated is going to be out for the final. So I'm putting in Tony Valena, who's been here since day one, to replace him in the central of our midfield spots. A very good side we've built. Very keen to see how it goes. Let's get into the Champions League final. Real Madrid versus Feyenoord. Counting all your aces, you ain't with me. Mm -hmm. 
Real Madrid in their own backyard. Can we take down Los Blancos at the Santiago Bernabeu? Let's find out. Mauro Icardi running down the line, putting that one in there. They get the header. I didn't expect them to win that header. Great save from Sergio Rico. They're on the attack here. Icardi going straight through. Mauro Icardi, our defense has been terrible. And Real Madrid have made us pay. Three at the back has been exposed early on here. And Los Blancos have a 1-0 advantage over after a dominant opening 10 minutes. Here we go. Abraham going to James Rodriguez. Going back here. We're just passing it around. Still haven't lost possession off of the kickoff. Valena running through. The 81-rated player almost gets us an equalizing goal there. We get the corner, though. James Rodriguez against his former side. He's going to belt this one into the area. Good stuff from Schick. It's going to go to Clive. Oh, I thought we might have snuck that one in the top corner. All right, a free kick here. Marcus Rashford. Casemiro lines up with him, 34 yards away. Rashford has the strike and just puts it over the bar, thankfully. Here we go, Schick. Going to Abraham. Going out wide to Clivert. Come on, Clivert. Good move there to get past Tayers. Still a lot of movement to make, though. A lot of room to make. We put a nice ball in there. Comes out. Valena. Long shot. Pings it. Good save from Leno. Would have been real nice to score that one, but we're going to put the corner in here. Put the cross in. Here we go. Schick. Back post. Oh, we needed Abraham to run up and tap that one in. Oh, it's a nice pass out there. Three at the back. Yes, good defense. Now can we get them on the counter? Valena. Going here to Hammers. Trying to split the defense. We're just going to go with Hammers Rodriguez. Goes for the long shot. Oh, it was worth a go. Oh, Rashford. That's a nice movement. Poor defending on my behalf. Takes it straight past Valena. Don't do it to me. Chiesa. Great save, Sergio Rico. I thought it was all over there. Oh, nice ball there from Pereira. Hammers Rodriguez running onto it. He's going to play this one through. Tammy Abraham, please. Tammy Abraham equalizes in the 70th minute. Why aren't our fans going crazy? We have just equalized. The Madrid defense kind of just tucked into a little pocket there. Look at that. They just tucked in. Abraham unleashed. I was not feeling confident one-on-one, -on -one, but he tucks it home, and we're all tied up. Real Madrid on the attack. Isco, no, they're going straight through here. They're passing it around. They get the rebound and they go back in front. Oh, get stuffed, Isco. We were just jockeying. Nice one, too. They get the lucky-ass rebound. And they're back in front. That is the worst. Pressure them. Yes, okay, it's a bad pass. Let's get the throw in. Abraham's so far open. Did you guys just see that? Please, Tammy. Please, Tammy. Please, Tammy. Oh, you are kidding me. Two minutes after going back behind, Tammy Abraham gets a second one. Did you see how far open he was? I was just like, all right, let's put the pressure on them. And then I pressed A to take the throw in. I saw how far open he was. What the hell just happened? We beautiful ball over the top. I thought they were going to make the last ditch tackle, but it's all tied up. This game, man, this game. No, 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 Rashford, no, yes, good save, Rico. My God, if they went back in front, I would have cried. Into stoppage time, Rashford has looked like Real Madrid's best option in this game. We can't let them. Please don't. Great tackle from Akanji. Come on. We're into stoppage time. We've got options. Look at the open space for Schick. Schick brings it down off the chest. Schick! 
No, he hits the post in the 90th minute. Are you kidding me? Oh, shit. Could have been the hero. But instead, we have to play an extra half an hour. Oh, what? Imagine the scenes. My God. Come on, we're passing it around here. Off the kickoff. Let's start the first half of extra time where we finished regular time. Oh, we almost got the touch in. Akadi. Get rid of that. Good stuff. Here we go. What can we do? Holy crap, look at the open players. Schick, he's offside, isn't he? Schick's offside, isn't he? No, he's onside. Schick, tap. No, I thought he was offside. I should have just embraced it like he was onside, which he was. Clivert finesses. Fuck me. Here we go. Rodri. Going through, Hammers Rodriguez is open, finesses it, Hammers Rodriguez puts us in front. He used to play for Real Madrid, and now he has might have scored the match-winning goal against them in the Champions League final. Look at that, we're just holding it up, beautiful run there, we draw and pass, first time finesse, top bins, what a well-constructed goal, we are in front. Oh, beautiful reading of the play there from Tammy Abraham. We're playing counter-attacking football now. We know Real Madrid are going to be pushing for the equaliser. So we're looking to hit them. Abraham's got the pace. Abraham's had a blinder. Comes down. Valena on the volley. What a goal! Oh, my! Valena just has secured us the Champions League final with the best goal of them all. Oh, my God. The man that wasn't even meant to start the final... He has been here since day one. Scores that. I thought it was a terrible cross, but look at that. Off the chest, under pressure, across the body. Bang, bang, bang. What a goal. Oh, we are 4-2 up here with an absolute screamer. Oh, beautiful stuff from Schick. Come on. Can we make it 5-2 now? Schick, 1-1 one -on -one to secure it. It's a great save from Leno. 120th minute. The Champions League title is going to be ours. Feyenoord are going to be rebuilt. What a crazy extra time period. An amazing performance from some parts of the game. But there it is. Feyenoord, you have been rebuilt. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to conclude yet another insane rebuild. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like on the video. Make sure you bloody score and kick that subscribe button down below if you are new around here. Check out my social media links, my Instagram and my Twitter. But most importantly, I hope you have a fantastic day. It has been Jared HD here. I am out. Thanks. One go just a couple more times. One smoke just a couple more times. One blow just a couple more lines. Me, I'm just on my mission. All black, everything politic. I'm just painting, but I want y'all to listen. But my choice can determine my decision. Look what I'm rocking, they looking and talking. Flow is like butter, I cook with it often. No satisfaction, I'm needing it more. All of this action, I'm keeping it raw. I came to work, they came to party, though, all by myself. Calling my calling flow, open your mind. Look at my moves. What do you see when you look at my shoes? They don't see all of the walking it took to blossom from being a part. To a rock and beyond, all black and I'm calm, king boy from here. When you look at me now, everyone looking, they looking around. Ever since I put a foot on the ground, been in the kitchen, I'm cooking it down. What do you see when you look at me now? Everyone looking, they looking around. Ever since I put a foot on the ground, been in the kitchen, I'm cooking it down. One track mind, wanna roll with this boy, get fly. Wings up on the all black eye, when it's done, meditate all night. Shorty got a one track mind, wanna go just a couple more times. Wanna smoke just a couple more times, wanna blow just a couple more lines.